right, thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, my name is Anna and I'm here with Asha. We're both from the marketing team at Train Smart Australia hosting the virtual open day today. Um, yeah, it's good to have you with us. I'm sure maybe there's more that are signing in along the way. Uh, but yeah, we'll get started. It's 11 a.m. And just, yeah, wanting to share with you, um, yeah, the opportunities through our health and community services faculty here at Train Smart Australia. If you have any questions, you can just go to the Q&A box and put in your questions, um, as well as the chat that's all enabled. So you can actually, um, yeah, um, let us know maybe what course you're interested in. Let us know what specific questions you have. Um, we'll have a quick presentation before, but then we'll be coming through the actual Q&A. That's really the purpose of this session, just a, a short um, time to just really answer your main questions um, regarding the course, regarding uh, maybe some of the interest. Um, and so, yeah, just put your questions into the Q&A and uh, we'll get to you once we get to the Q&A session. So. Um, yeah, let's start. Uh, Transmart Australia has been a leading educational institute since 2005. Um, yeah, we're just very committed to delivering high quality education. Um, we offer diploma and certificate for courses um, that are all um, accredited and nationally recognized. So um, like mentioned before, this is for the health and community services faculty. But we're also having like three other faculties that we're running and offer courses for. And one is massage and beauty therapy. Uh, one is business and management. And the other one is information technology. Um, so this virtual open day is for our health and community services faculty. And um, yeah, we're excited to have you here and with us. Um, just to highlight some of our courses, some of the main points of our courses uh, can be studied 100% online. So you really can study anytime, anywhere. Uh, the only exception to um, studying online is if you access the WA government subsidy, then the course will be a face-to-face on-campus course here in Perth at our campus. Um, but apart from that, yeah, you can study online and, and it's very convenient, very flexible. Uh, our courses are nationally recognized and accredited with the ASQA, the Australian Skill and Qualification Framework, um, which really allows you to apply for jobs anywhere in Australia um, with, this, with a diploma qualification or the certificate qualification. Uh, generally, our courses are 12 months long. Um, it is possible to apply for extensions if you would need more study time. Uh, but yeah, it, it is doable to do it within a 12 months framework um, with self-paced learning or then attending of virtual classes. And then we have, we offer flexible payment options. Um, yeah, just to help you in um, getting the education you need. And, um, you know, education is not always cheap, but um, yeah, we're committed to have things in place to make it easy for you and help you through that and get trained. Um, so who can do our diploma courses? Um, yeah, if you're just starting out in a career and you want to learn, um, if you're interested to upskill, uh, interested to add to your current skill set, uh, you might be interested in doing something for mental health or counseling or youth work, um, then this, the, the diploma courses are for you. If you have already a lot of experience, but you just want to formalize your experience, you don't actually have the qualification, then this would be perfect for you as well. Or like if you want to have a pathway into university. Um, so our diploma courses are um, a good entry into a university pathway. Um, so with some, you basically can um, yeah, enter university in usually year two already. So often university good degrees are two to three years long, sometimes longer, depending on what you're studying. And so the diploma course would already give you credits towards your, your university degree, which makes it easier um, to get into. And uh, so, yeah, the diploma courses really can help with that. As part of, um, you know, our diploma courses as well. We have recognition of prior learning. So you might have already studied some of the units. You might have already studied a course 
um, and you want to do another course um, where units overlap, um, you can apply for recognition of prior learning, which really allows you to save time and, and money in completing your next course. Uh, so once you've enrolled in the course, you're able to just um, yeah talk to your trainers and apply for recognition of prior learning to see which units are already um, you have already learned, and um, we can recognize those. So coming to our health and community services faculty, there's six diploma courses that we offer and that we run. Uh, one would be the Diploma of Counseling, uh, Diploma of Mental Health, Diploma of Community Services, um, Diploma of Community Services Case Management, uh, Diploma of Youth Work, and Diploma of Alcohol and Other Drugs. So six courses, as well as some certificate four courses in mental health, alcohol and other drugs and community services. So this, um, through these courses, you really be able to get into a very in-demand um, industry um, that is in need of a lot of workers and um, it trains and equips you to be job ready. We'll just go through each, oh, before we go through each one, we'll just talk of quickly about our trainers. Our trainers really come from the industry. They're highly experienced, highly knowledgeable. And they really bring their personal experience into the teaching. So um, their backgrounds really make your learning experience so much better because of that personal experience in the industry. And so there's a variety of different trainers and new trainers joining us as well to be ready for courses. And so, yeah, you're in very good hands when studying with us. Great, we're going through each one of the courses quickly just to give you an idea of what the courses are about. Hopefully this will be able to um, help you to decide maybe some of the, um, the course that you would like to study or that you're interested in. This is a Diploma of Counseling. Um, we'll just uh, go through what, who is this course for? Yeah, it's someone that um, would like to pursue a career in counseling, then this diploma would definitely be your starting point. Um, if you're a good active listener, um, you're passionate about working with diverse people um, from various backgrounds, um, you'll be able to work independently, um, you're willing to self-reflect on your work as well, and you possess strong communication abilities. So these are some of the core characteristics needed within counseling. Uh, the Diploma of Counseling can lead to job outcomes like your family support worker, your case worker, school counselor, drug and alcohol counselor, youth work, gu guidance officer, or a disability respite worker. Um, this is your yeah, starting positions within counseling. And um, you can obviously go on after that as well to continue to study a bachelor in counseling, you can go on to do a master's in counseling, you can do a bachelor's in social services. Um, so this diploma would really sort of open the door into um, the further education as well. Throughout the diploma, what you learn is um, to facilitate your counseling relationship and processes. So you learn, a, you learn about how to relate to a client, how to respond to a client, you would um, learn about how to do research and apply theories and counseling practice. So you'll be able to look at um, your knowledge and actually apply those theories that you learn about. Um, you learn how to provide services to people from diverse communities and needs. Uh, you would know obviously all of our communities are so diverse, different na nationalities, different genders, different ways, different age groups, you'll be really able to cater to anyone and to work with people from every area um, and through support them in their needs. And you would learn how to support people through crisis, loss and grief, and just really dealing with some of the difficulties they have in their lives. The next one is a Diploma of Mental Health. Uh, you would notice as we go through the sum of um, some of the core character characteristics are the same throughout these um, courses. So even for mental health, you would need to be a good active listener. Uh, you need to have good self-reflection -re skills. 
um, you need to be patient and tolerant. Mental people with struggling with mental health go through a lot of things. So you need to be patient and be able to walk with them through that. Um, you have a knowledge or experience of mental health struggles. So um, you might have walked through it with um, someone in your family. You might have to walk through it personally. Um, but it's just definitely beneficial if you have that experience. Um, it's not necessarily needed, but it is, um, it is a good base because you understand what is going on. Uh, be empathetic, genuine, and non-judgmental. Have a broad worldview as well, because you will be dealing with people again from a variety of different um, communities and, um, and nations. Um, have the ability to adapt and respond appropriately. Um, yeah, with mental health, there's so much different areas that you need to work with. So you need got to be able to adapt to the different needs clients have. Um, if you look for higher studies, you can go on to um, psychological science, study psychological science. You can go on business diploma into a bachelor's degree as well as master's um, further. Some job outcomes would be mental health outreach worker, uh, mental health support worker, coordinator or assessor, case manager, program service coordinator, welfare support worker. So all of these areas you can enter in with the Diploma of Mental Health. And uh, as throughout the course, you'll be looking again, you'll be looking at things like, what did it look like to work legally and ethically um, in mental health? You're going to learn on how to understand your client's need holistically, not just one area, but the whole of your client. Uh, you'll be able to explore available support strategies and services, as well as yeah, supporting people with complex issues. And how do you go about that? What can you set in place um, to support people and walk, through, walk with them through the problems they're having? Moving on to the Diploma of Youth Work. Um, I'm going through this very quickly, but that's just to give you an idea, and then you can continue to ask questions um, and put it in the Q&A section of Zoom, and um, we'll get to your questions at the end. So with the Diploma of Youth Work, again, got to be a good active listening skill. That's a core characteristic for all in health and community services, because we're dealing with people, and we're dealing with people that need help, and so we got to be able to listen to their needs and listen to what they're communicating to be able to respond appropriately. Uh, be interested in sports and creative activities. Young people love to be active and creative. Um, be an active person. Have the ability to work well in a team. Often within youth work, you are working within a team, um, whether it's been a school context, whether it's been in the club context. So you gotta be work well with others together. Uh, you have strong communication skills. Um, be flexible and adaptable. Um, if you are aspiring to pursue higher studies, higher education, then you've, the Diploma of Youth Work can lead to a bachelor's in social work. And uh, from there, you can follow through on with a master's in social work as well. Uh, some of the job outcomes would be obviously a youth worker, a community development worker, indigenous youth worker, youth alcohol and drugs worker, a youth caseworker. And what you'll be learning throughout the Diploma of Youth Work is how to work legally and ethically. Again, that's uh, something that you learn all across all the health and community service sector because it is so important for every course and every, every job that you do as you, again, you're working with people. You gotta learn to identify and support mental health and addiction needs uh, within young people. And, you so, and how to support young people to take actions and express their needs, um, as well as how to develop and implement youth-specific pro programs. You, you want to be able to do this course because you want to help young people become uh, the best they can be and to be able to navigate the social challenges that they are having. And there's a lot of challenges you, uh, our young people having these days. And so you want to be able to come alongside them and really help them through these challenges. And, and that's really what the Diploma of Youth Work looks at um, and to how to do that. Great. The Diploma of Community Services 
you got to have a social mindset. Yeah, the community services, it's, it's all about social. It's our communities. Um, so you be team orientated. Um, you have good communications and interpersonal skills. Uh, you have good leadership skills. Um, excellent writing skills for preparing documents. So there's a little bit of work there where you need to do writing. Um, you need to be able to write well so people understand what you're writing. Um, you're going to need strong time management skills to manage multiple caseloads. It's a lot of pressure at times within community services. So you work well under pressure. Uh, looking for higher studies, again, it will lead you into social work. Um, you can follow through after the Diploma of Community Services with a bachelor's in social work, which then can also lead to master's degrees. And your job outcomes for a Diploma of Community Services would be you work as a residential support worker, a case manager, community care worker, youth case worker, Aboriginal intake and referral worker, recreational activities officer. Um, these are just some of the job outcomes that you can be looked for. And in terms of what you'll be learning, you'll be, you'll be looking at how to, again, work legally and ethically within people in a diverse community, how to assess community needs and how to develop service programs that actually address those specific needs that you have identified. And you look at to analyze individual needs as well and how to provide case management. The Diploma of Community Services case management is very similar. Um, you have need the same um, core skills for this as well. Um, you have a similar um, job outcomes. You, you can work in community housing workers. You can work as a senior youth worker, as a housing assistant, as an Aboriginal neighborhood house coordinator. Um, the difference here really is more the focus is on case management. And um, so where the community services um, looks at the broad community needs and how to address them, the case management would very clearly um, look at sort of the complex issues you're facing and how to coordinate the services to get people the right help that they need. Um, and looking at sort of the overall well-being of um, the people that you work with. And so within this um, case management course, you'll, you'll again, you look at assessing community needs and developing service programs, analyze individual needs, provide case management. But you'll also be looking at um, assessments, intervention planning, referral and support processes, and then um, how to really go through, through these with people. And of course, you work legally and ethically as well within diverse communities. And the uh, last course to talk about briefly is the Diploma of Alcohol and Other Drugs. Um, so for this one, um, you really, you need to be and have an understanding of whole of life issues, um, be non-judgmental in your approach, um, be a pre have an appreciation of different choices in life. So what that really means, just really being able to accept choices people have made and uh, be appreciate those and walk with them through those choices they have made. Uh, a personal recovery journey experience can be helpful in this, and um, but it is not as essential. You can also do this course without any personal experience and still really be able to come alongside to help people. Um, if you're aspiring um, higher education, uh, a bachelor's of social work, counseling, community services, it all can lead towards that. Um, in terms of job outcomes, um, drug and alcohol counselor, um, you can be an alcohol and other drug mentor, um, service coordinator, youth support officer, alcohol and other drugs case manager, or a support worker. And um, what you learn is um, different communication techniques, techniques such as motivational interviewing. Uh, you'll be looking at understanding the need and making personal strategy to, to approach different, um, the needs that um, people are having. Uh, you develop strategies and interventions for people with alcohol and other drugs issues. So really coming alongside um, 
the different needs they're having and um, develop strategies to really help them through um, the difficulties. So really that what health and community services is all about, it's about making a difference. Yeah, it's about helping people coming alongside people, whether it is in a broad spectrum like community services or even counseling mental health, or if it's in a very specialized area like alcohol and other drugs or um, youth work in that specialization. Um, this is just a quick overview of um, characteristics you need, job outcomes, um, you know, what you'll be learning. Uh, we really want to give you the platform to really just ask your questions. You probably have already been reading up on a lot of areas. And um, so we just really open this up to a question and answer time because that's really what this session is all about. I could probably talk for a lot longer on all the different specific needs, but we just see, yeah, I want to hear from you and answer your specific questions. So if you have questions, um, yeah, pop them in the Q&A section in Zoom or in the chat and uh, Asha will be able to let us know maybe what the first question already is. Uh, hi, Anna. Thanks for the quick insight of all the different courses. Uh, we have a first question like coming up in our chat. How does counseling differ from mental health? Yeah, that is an excellent question. Um, counseling and mental health are both really equally important. Yeah. Um, and they're both needed within society today. So mental health really looks at an individual overall physical, emotional, and psychological well-being. Um, so you're really um, looking at every area of what would support your mental health. Um, part of that um, mental health journey can be counseling and it can be talking with a counselor, but part of that mental health journey could also just um, having other strategies in place that will really help an individual to look after themselves. Um, counseling focuses on really specific problems where we take each individual through their problems and help to address their problems. So um, you might have someone to come and approach you as a counselor needs help with financial stress, um, grief and loss, areas of anxiety, depression, um, mental health as well, gambling, domestic violence, homelessness, all of these areas a counselor will address um, by working with an individual or a family um, to really see change and see them thrive in their life. Um, and that's really the main difference between mental health and counseling. Mental health focuses on just mental health and all the areas that are needed in mental health, mental health, so physical, emotional, psychological well-being, mentally, and counseling really helps an individual or family to really navigate some of the difficulties we do face in life. Uh, what what happens with um, how we can also portray that is that um, uh, support workers, mental health support workers, welfare workers, that really bridges a gap between our general practitioners and our counselors and psychologists. So yeah, there's often a gap between those two and uh, people access help uh, between that. And that's where mental health can come in as well, where mental health support worker can really support individuals um, in looking after themselves. And so um, it really comes down in deciding what you want to study. It comes down to really what you're motivated in and what you would like to do with your life. Would you like to really just more focus on becoming a counselor and really helping individuals through difficulties? Or do you just really wanna come alongside people to really help them in their mental health? And that might just mean like helping them to set up a mental health plan so that they um, can be um, you know, navigating their life in a, in a thriving way and in a um, really supportive way to to be healthy holistically. We have a question now, like if uh, if you complete a diploma of counseling, would it be worth doing another diploma afterwards, such as like get into diploma of mental health? So what's your answer for that? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there is no limitation on um, diplomas you can do. Um, I think you, if you do a diploma of counseling, and I think a diploma of mental health really will add on to a diploma of counseling, it adds, gives you another specialization in it as well. Because obviously the diploma of mental health would look at um, uh, very specific things um, like, um, you know, advocacy, um, how to really facilitate recovery processes, um, how to provide support and wellness plans, um, how to establish, you know, that relationship with a person and walk through it, uh, where the counseling diploma would obviously focus on different things. So there is obviously you learn about um, how you have that relationship with your clients, you learn about um, reflections, you learn about um, how to use select the right counseling therapy, um, and how to apply your learned theories and counseling. But the mental health diploma would definitely give you another level of skill and qualification that would you would be able to get a job with as well. It just it, it is an extension. It's, it's not just an extension of a diploma of counseling. It is another skill set that you would just be adding to yourself. And it, it, it continues to train you and sets you up in a really good way to be able to, um, yeah, just go out into the communities and really help people. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, Anna, definitely. It will definitely help him to, you know, make a choice. And the next question would be like, can you explain like how the students prepare to be like job ready in the field of study, especially what is the process of conducting the practical assessment for the students? Um, yeah, being job ready, um, that's really what we're wanting to get you to through all of our courses. Our courses are very practical and they're very like geared towards you coming out of it, ready to join the industry and ready to enter the industry. And um, so the way we're doing that through our diploma courses, they are competency-based learning. So um, you don't actually end up getting a letter grade, but you're getting a, a grade of competent or not yet competent. And throughout the course, um, trainers will work with you towards becoming competent in this field and in this skill. And um, so by the end of your diploma, you'll be competent in this in the, in the course that you have studied, in the course that you are looking to study. And so each unit that you study is um, combined, has a combination of three things. They have knowledge-based questions, um, there's case study questions, and there's practical assessments. So, um, so basically, you, you got to look, you read your materials, you look at, um, you learn the knowledge, you learn the theories, uh, you have to answer questions around those. Uh, you look at case studies and you and you learn from case studies and how do you how to respond to those and then you put this into practice and then you have a practical assessment and uh, that's really where you just learn practically how to how to do it and so each unit um, you have to do those three things and most of our diploma courses have anywhere between 16 to 20 units of study um, and so these practical assessments are done through um, generally done through role plays uh, between a trainer and an assessor or between a, the student and an actor. Um, we have um, a set up something that we call simulated practicals. And in these simulated practicals, you, um, you, you are in a Zoom call, a bit similar to what we are doing right now, just that um, you actually see the person, you can talk to each other. So it's not a webinar section, but um, and you actually treat it as your client um, counselor relationship or your client and yeah, you're working with them and, and you have an interview and you actually apply what you've learned to help them. And the actor would resemble real life scenarios. So they come with a scenario of maybe difficulties they're facing in their lives. And so you need to be able to then identify what are their problems um, what would be the best solution to really help them, the best therapy to help them and um, yeah, interact with them. And so that's how often the practical assessments are done. Um, the other aspect is that 
some most of these courses have also a work placement um, component to it. So you actually be able to be put into a work placement situation with an organization in your location. And, um, and you actually practically get to work alongside um, council, not counselors, but mental health support workers, community workers, youth workers. Um, the Diploma of Counseling does not have a work placement component, um, but the Diploma of Mental Health, the Diploma of Youth Work, Diploma of Community Services all have work placement components from up to 160 hours um, that you need to um, complete as part of to actually finishing your studies. And so those are the, some of the ways that we actually get you workplace ready. Um, throughout the course, there'll be different other essential skills that you'll be learning and picking up um, that will get you job ready. But um, yeah, we're highly practical, hands-on training, and that's sort of our focus. And uh, because um, it's uh, those practical scenarios that actually really get you ready um, for a workplace. And so once you finish your diploma, you'll be able to go um, straight into a job. Thanks for the answer, Anna. We have like a, a next question, like within this health and community services, what are the like a common subject that students actually study? Yeah, some of the common um, units, I've already touched on it a little bit, but it's um, you got to work legally and ethically. Um, so in every, you, of every course, you have to look at that because we are working with people from diverse communities. You'll be looking at um, how to reflect and improve your own professional practice. Um, that self-reflection, it's really important in health and community services because you got to look at how can I improve myself as well to really give the best service and to really help people and to be able to identify maybe what worked and what didn't work. Um, you look at managing personal stresses in the work environment. Um, yeah, all work environments have stresses. And so, you know, you got to look after how to handle your stresses as well. And health and community services, as you're dealing with people and their problems, it can become quite stressful at times. And so you're learning about how, how you can manage your stress and how you can look after yourself as well within this, within this job and within this industry. Um, yeah, you'll be looking at uh, working with diverse people. Yeah, we are, um, here in Australia, we have very diverse communities. And so we'll be able to look at some of the differences and to be able to actually work well with them together, we got to understand what those differences are. And those are some of the common um, units. One other common unit would be how to promote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultural safety. Um, that's a big part of Australian culture. It's like working with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And so you're looking at how to really um, promote cultural safety for them and to work alongside them. Thanks for the Dana. We have like multiple people asking a similar question, like where can counseling students register for the student membership? All right, yeah, that's a very important question. Um, with, uh, for counselors, counselors is um, sort of a profession that's not necessarily regulated. So it's an unregulated title to call yourself a counselor. And so what that means is um, yeah, there's no regulations around calling yourself a counselor. However, what it means is um, if you want to have your own practice, you need a professional indemnity insurance, and which is if you become part of an accredited body for counseling, um, that's, they'll be able to provide that insurance. However, you would need a bachelor's degree in order to do that. Um, so for the diploma, that really gives you an entry level into a bachelor's degree, um, but you can already work in other capacities as a counselor. And so you could join, there's different um, accreditations um, that you could join uh, that you can register for. You have the PACFA, you have the CPCA. Um, they both allow student membership and they give students great benefits in terms of really getting into the counseling industry and getting um, information. You would get newsletters, um, you'd be, you know, able to get to events and um, networking with people. Um, there also is the ACA. Um, however, the ACA doesn't allow any student memberships at this point. Um, so um, we would, our students wouldn't be able to register with the ACA. 
Uh, but yeah, PACFA, CPCA, they both are, you know, uh, counseling associations that allow student memberships. And I will give you great um, insight into job opportunities as well, but really gives you insight into the industry and how to work in the industry, how to really engage uh, and to stay on top of sort of new industry trends as well. Very helpful, Anna. Like the next question we have is like, how does youth worker differ from a social worker? Quite interesting one. Yeah, that is a, a good question. Um, uh, again, social work is sort of a, a broad term, um, a, you know, that goes around like community services. Um, you can do a lot of things as a social worker. Often social workers, however, they have a bachelor's degree. Um, youth work is really very sp specifically focused on working with young people and helping our young people really navigate um, the challenging times. Um, you know, not young people, they struggle with a lot of mental health problems. All of that has increased over the last years. They have a lot of pressures on them as well. And so youth workers really just focus on young people. However, the Diploma of Youth Work really gives you an entry point into social work as well. Um, so it is a beginning step and you can obviously further extend that into studying a bachelor's of social work to continue to widen uh, your influence and your impact. So you wanted to maybe, you know, you could start with youth work and maybe later on you decide, oh, I would want to work more with families, more holistically. You can always expand your studies and further. Thanks for that, Anna. So here we at Train Smart, we actually focus is more on this online learning. Uh, we have a question which is like regarding to online learning, how students can learn through online learning. Can you elaborate on the student learning platform about the study material they get? Uh, yeah, um, online learning definitely has increased over the last number of years. And it's something that's really, um, students have been able to enjoy. The, they enjoy the flexibility um, they enjoy sort of that self-paced studying. Uh, the way it works um, with our courses, so they're 100% online. Um, again, I'm just mentioning, unless you um, do, um, utilize the WA government subsidy, then you have to come on campus to study face-to-face. -face. But with 100% online studies, um, there's virtual, virtual classes that are available for you to join. Uh, but then you also get access to our Learn Smart platform, which is really uh, that houses um, all of um, all of the reading materials, the webinars, audio clips, resource materials, your learner guides, journal articles, anything that you need to actually study and get content. So for in Learn Smart, the, you get access to it as a student. And within each for each unit, you have access then to your reading materials. Um, webinars, uh, classes are recorded as well to, to watch. Um, there's audio clips ready. Um, all the resource materials are needed uh, for you to be able to go through it as well. Then you'll be able to go through your knowledge based questions. You'll be able to submit your assessments. Um, within that Learn Smart platform, you're also able to um, uh, submit. Yeah, submit your um, assessments, but other than you're able to book your practical assessments. So if you need a, a simulated practicals, if you need to to book something in, there's that platform available for you to find a time slot where an actor would be free for you to complete some of your practical assessments. So um, we have a very good intuitive system set up um, through our Learn Smart platform that really allows you to study at your time. Uh, when you're free, whether that's in the evening, whether it's throughout the day. Um, we do recommend um, people to study 20 to 25 hours a week um, to complete the course on time. It's sort of a commitment that's um, often needed to um, go through the course. Um, and yeah, so it's a very exciting way to actually learn and to have all the information accessible. Um, I think the one thing is you just need a reliable internet connection. Um, that's sort of the key to be able to actually, you know, access the internet. Um, but yeah, even the virtual classes you are able to join um, and um, yeah, join in with other peers in that setting as well, if you can. Um, the trainers are available for you throughout this time as well. So we have to, um, you know, in yourself, 
paced studies. Um, you have access to the trainers to be able to set up a once a week meeting with them to go through any questions that you might have. And uh, the trainers would be available to answer any questions and help you through um, your studies. Like one person, they wanted like asking about the current demand of the health and community service workers in Australia. Yeah, the current demand is um, definitely quite good. Um, you know, over the last num over the last year, um, looking at the labor market insight report, um, the health and community services has grown by 4.8%. So that's just the last year alone. So there's definitely a high demand for these courses. Um, it is also expected to continue to grow. Um, over the next five years, the health and community services sector is meant to grow by 15.8%. So that's quite actually a large number. Um, the health and community service sector is one of the biggest sectors within Australia, within the workforce as well. And it's obviously comprised of everything like hospitals, you know, nurses, allied health professionals, support and wealth, health, welfare workers. Um, and so obviously the hospitals are sort of the biggest employment um, area. But the next biggest would be your social assistant services just followed by allied health professionals and residential care services. So all these sectors are really expected just to grow and there'll be a high demand for, for workers that are ready to just um, yeah, really come alongside people in need. Thanks for the Dana. I'm taking up the last question. So how does a diploma course help students enter university or pursue higher education? Interesting one. Yeah, thanks for the question. We briefly already talked about that there's all um, study pathways out of the diplomas into higher education. But just again, how this works is that the units you have studied are really counting towards the degree already. Um, and so, for example, if you're doing a diploma of counseling and you study your 16, 17 units, um, those units count towards that bachelor of, of uh, counseling. Um, however, if you're doing a different course, then those units might vary. So it's really the universities would have to look at what units have you studied and how are they uh, corresponding with their course and their units. Uh, but most of them, if you're staying in that that's um, the same stream, um, there's definitely units there that you can take into your already bachelor's degree and then um, save yourself time studying there as well. There are some benefits um, of maybe doing a diploma first before um, study going straight into universities. Um, you might not be quite ready for university yet. You might not have studied for a long time. And so a diploma course could really help you engage first again and getting familiar with um, learning and familiar with how the studying, um, how the time commitment works for you in terms of studying which then gives you the confidence to go on into university and being able to carry through the commitments. Um, you also have, while you're studying, you already have a qualification ready. So you'll be able to take up positions besides studying that, where you can already be working in the field as well. And so that's another benefit of doing a diploma um, to enter university. The other um, big, I think, difference would be that the Diploma course is highly practical. Universities are very knowledge-based and academic-driven. Um, and so as you do the diploma, it's very practical. And so you get very confident in actually dealing with people, talking to people. And um, that can really be a, a good benefit um, to do before entering university. Then by the time you get to university, and you learn all the knowledge, you already have the practical skills, you can just apply the knowledge to that practical skill. And so you have the confidence of actually talking with people. And there's numerous students we have who um, they've done the diploma with us, they've gained confidence, and they've now gone on to university and continue their studies, and they're very successful in that. And so, yeah. You know, that's how it sort of works. The diploma course can be a great entryway into university. Um, you know, if you study Diploma of Community Services, your units count towards a Bachelor's of Social Work or Bachelor of Community Services. And um, those units will be matched 
by the university to what you're studying. Um, it depends on the university, how many units um, they recognize. Um, but yeah, it definitely counts towards it and it can give you the confidence needed to really go on into further studies. Yeah, I hope that answers that question. Yes, Anna. Thanks for patiently answering all the questions. Uh, that's good. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thanks for joining everyone. That's sort of a very brief overview of um, our courses, how we how we operate, how you can study with um, Transmart. We are very committed, obviously, to, to give great service to our students and our trainers are very committed to walk with you through your study and your learning experience as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. We will be sending out an email with this link where you can rewatch this. Um, if you have any questions, let us know um, and get in touch with us. Our career advisors are available to, to talk with you more about these different options. And we hope this helps you to decide just um, what course you would maybe like to study. You might be thinking about multiple ones, but hopefully this has given you a bit more of an idea of maybe which ones to focus on and which one would be right for you to study at this time. Get in touch with us with any questions, either through our website, uh, through our social media, uh, give us a phone, yeah, phone call and email, and uh, we love to answer your questions more.